Once poured into a tank of fuel, they all claim to enhance engine performance. But do they? We've got Nitrox Hot Shot. It costs about eight quid and promises faster acceleration. Wynn's enticingly titled Octane Booster is a fiver and claims to do all sorts of good things as well as increase engine performance. Noz Octane Boost is supposedly for racing use only and costs a whopping 20 quid. Finally, there's the £5 STP Power Booster, which says it'll restore lost horsepower. To put the claims to the test, we enlisted the help of some experts. Here at the Oxford Brooks School of Technology, they have some of the most advanced fuel testing equipment in the world. They've hooked up a Rover K-Series engine to a series of computers which precisely control the throttle to make each test exactly the same. Numerous variables can be monitored, but the one we're interested in is power. Each additive was measured out as per the manufacturer's recommended dosage and added to ordinary supermarket unleaded. To begin with, the engine was run on half and full throttle using standard fuel to establish a base power figure to measure how much extra power the products gave us. Between each test, the engine was flushed through for 15 minutes to ensure there was no contamination between samples. The computer program gradually increased engine speed across an hour-long cycle and continually fed back data for analysis. With each additive put through its paces in exactly the same way, we eagerly awaited the results. Which product would give us the biggest power boost? Well, it's not Nitrox Hotshot. It may say on the bottle it can improve BHP by up to 10%, but here it actually reduced power by 2%. And it was a similar result with Wynn's Octane Boost. One of the claims it makes is to improve acceleration, but it would struggle to achieve that when peak power was again down by 2%. What about the expensive racing-only additive from NOS? Surely that did the business? Well, no. It reduced power by, you've guessed it, 2%, which leaves STP's power booster. Does this represent a fiver well spent? Well, like the others, it caused a 2% drop in power across the rev range, but a 6% drop off at full throttle. We were amazed. In this test, at least, it seems you're better off without them. Our experts suggested that the products might make improvements to a more performance-orientated engine, so we tried one of them in our Civic Type R on the way home. But guess what? We didn't notice any difference at all. Regular use over a period of time may result in some benefits, but it seems like there really is no such thing as cheap power.